during performance. During performance, an athlete should consume 30 to 60 grams of carbs per hour of activity. So something like a sports drink or a sports gel will be able to provide that. Now, it can include, as I said, gels, high-energy snacks such as fruit, um, particularly bananas. Now, you'll notice that tennis players tend to snack on bananas like midway through their match, particularly longer matches, so they can maintain their glycogen levels. And many of the great tennis players are often snacking away on bananas. Now, you need moderate to high GI foods um, during performance because you want to maintain that blood glucose. And a high GI snack will provide an instant boost of of glucose into the blood so the body can grab it and use it straight away. In a sport like gymnastics, um, you know, the event can last for hours and gymnasts can be waiting around, lots of breaks. So it's important that uh, during performance nutrition is maintained. So snacking and things like that is important for an event like that. Hydration, we need to consume 200 mils every 15 to 20 minutes um, to maintain hydration. Uh, An isotonic sports drink may be useful as this type of drink provides electrolytes and carbohydrates. So more carbohydrates, the better during performance. And if it can be supplied through hydration, even better. Post-performance. Hydration. 1 to 1.5 litres for every kilogram lost. That's the general rule for post-performance. And a hypertonic drink may be useful to replace lost carbohydrate. You can see in this image, it shows on a continuum the three types of drinks. Hypotonic contains very little carbohydrates, but a good in terms of replacing uh, lost fluid and general hydration. Um, The isotonic drink contains some carbohydrates and it's great for during performance as I mentioned earlier but the hypertonic drink uh, contains quite a lot of carbohydrates and it's very good for those that want to replace their energy really quickly and it's important to replace carbohydrates rapid, uh, very quickly after the event because the lost glycogen needs to be replaced as soon as possible so the athlete can recover. So high GI foods are recommended to provide more immediate release of glucose into the bloodstream and a faster recovery of glycogen stores. So the body really craves the glycogen again in the muscle so they can start recovering and preparing for the next training session or, or performance. So that's why the, the high GI foods are needed to give that really intense, um, rapid uh, glycogen um, into the muscles. Within the first two hours, 50 grams of high to moderate GI carbs are recommended. So a meal is required, a carbohydrate meal that's going to help boost um, the carbohydrates and increase the level of stored muscle glycogen. Now, basically, athletes need to continue with their high-carb high diet. So not only do they need carbohydrates or high carbohydrates during um uh, in the lead up to performance and during, you need it post performance as well. So, seven grams per kilogram body weight is a good aim for most um, elite athletes uh, to recover over the next 24 hours, and this is to replace lost glycogen. Now, a balanced diet after, after performance is very, very important, and that brings us to protein. Now, protein assists in tissue repair, so our muscles have undergone quite a significant stress or strain during intense exercise and the muscles degrade a little bit as a result. The protein repairs the the muscle tissue and assists in recovery so that the athlete can return quite quickly uh, to their performance, uh, to their training uh, and get back on track quickly. So um, 1.6 1.6 grams per kilogram of body weight daily is required um, and up to 1.7, so a little bit more for those that are involved in weight and power sports. And good sources are fish, you can see there's some salmon uh, in the image there and also steak 
and, and other types of red meat and chicken are good sources of protein. This uh, diagram clearly shows you that uh, the protein intake gets higher and higher for those that are taking part in um, power sports. So footballers and power athletes require more protein because their muscles are being stressed more so than um, endurance athletes, for example, who don't require as much. Now, when we consider the learn to statement, compare the dietary requirements of athletes in different sports, considering pre, during, and post performance needs, a great place to go to is the Ozsport website, which is organised by the Australian Institute of Sport. And you'll find there that there is that there are a number of fact sheets for different sports. If you click on the links, you'll find you can see here gymnastics, distance running, rugby league, rugby union, and it'll have detailed information about the nutritional requirements. So your goal in the lead up to next lesson should be to go to this website, download uh, the information for three different sports, and start comparing what's required for those sports. The general rule is any sport that's quite intense and lasts 90 minutes plus is going to need carbohydrate loading. Any sport uh, that is elite um, is going to need or going to require the athlete to have at least seven grams per kilogram of body weight of carbohydrates uh, pre and post performance. And most sports are going to require some protein uh, for recovery uh, in their post um, performance meals. Uh, all of the uh, events or, or sports will require hydration. Uh, 500 to 600 mils one hour prior, um, 200 mils every 15 minutes during, and 1.5 litres per kilogram uh, lost as well post-performance. So it's just a matter of finding what's similar and what's different between the different sports and then bringing that information together so that you can determine uh, the key points with regard to nutrition for each sport. Thank you very much for listening to this presentation and we'll see you in the classroom.